What is up, family? Welcome to Speak. We got an action-packed show for you today, starting with really the most intriguing topic in the sports world right now. It's this one. Remember, there's a whole lot of drama brewing in Buffalo. They are the second best team in football the last two years, the last three years, the last four years by regular season record. But Josh Allen, the quarterback, he says that Stephon Diggs, he's his guy. The media has blown all of the drama out of proportion. Well, let's get to the desk to really figure out what we have to say about it on the far end. Slick, how you doing, my friend? I'm doing well. I recovered from, I didn't get blown up by the fireworks Yo. in L.A. My goodness. Oh, yeah, how about that? Oh, I kind of knew, but I've, I've seen video. Time? I haven't yeah, lived yeah. it. This was yeah. your first fourth in L.A.? Yes, it was. Yeah, L.A. takes fourth of July. Very seriously. Very seriously. That's no the Buter, Buker, NBA insider, to his right, the brilliant Joy Taylor. Joy, how are we? Great. It looks like oh. silk. Is that silk? Uh, beautiful. What was it? <laughs> oh, it looks like silk. Nice. Eagles all time brother? Russian leader, LaShawn Shady McCoy. Well, we already teased the topic. Let's get right to it. The drama shady that is in Buffalo. Remember, at the beginning of camp, Buffalo head Bills head coach Sean McDermott, he said he was very concerned. Because Stephon Diggs, superstar wide receiver, showed up to practice, right. but then he didn't practice. It was that mandatory minicamp that he missed. But now Josh Allen is saying that we blow in the whole thing out of proportion. You were an all-pro running back for the Buffalo Bills. Had a lot of great seasons with the Buffalo Bills. You were there when Josh Allen got drafted. Mm -hmm. You know him better than anybody on television. So break it down for us. Is the drama over in Buffalo? I, I want to say yes, but then as you alluded to how in the offseason there were some, some issues they had. So I'm going to say no. I talked to a lot of my, my, my boys over there. I won't say names, but there was some friction there. Mm -hmm. It was a couple of celebrity games, right, that Josh Allen was there, Stephon Diggs was there, and they didn't have the handshakes that you see on TV that they normally do. Mm. And they didn't even speak. It was more like, <laughs> guess my head nods, like, what up? And I'm like, wow, that's, that's, that's alarming because your wide receiver and your quarterback, that's like the best connection in football. Should be. Right? And for them not to speak... I'm like, dang, really? Maybe, maybe this is one little situation. Then fast forward, they get to, to OTAs and, and camp, mini camp, and Stefan comes there, and it's just real brief. Yeah. What's up? And I'm, I'm not used to saying that. Mm. And Josh Allen's a guy, it's hard to dislike Josh Allen. Yep. He's, he's, he's a warrior on the field. He's real supportive, funny guy. He loves to be around the guys in the locker room. So that was hard to understand that. But I learned that, listen, it's real. Now, I do think they have enough, enough time to figure it out. But when Stefan, you know, talked about, hey, look, he wants to be involved more in the offense of, of play calls and et cetera, and he wasn't happy. Yep. And he made that vocal. Like, he, he didn't show up. He, he stormed out the locker room after they lost the game. So there's something to it. I just think that hopefully they can kind of, you know, fix that and resolve that before the season starts. Here's the thing. I don't really defend the media a lot. But when people start blaming the media for the media reacting to something that we were told my drama antenna is going to be up. You're not going to catch me defending the media very often. But y'all told us there was a problem. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Sean McDermott was asked That's true. by the media. Sean has grown. It wasn't his first time in a press conference. There was no reason for him to be caught off guard by the question. And he chose to answer it this way. Voice cracked a little bit. <laughs> Why is that our fault? Oh, the media is making too big of a deal about it. You told us to make a big deal about it. He could have said it ain't yeah. nothing. Don't worry about it. It's, it's, it's internal. It's not what you guys think. Carry on. He could have said that. He didn't. So walk on up to the boss man's office and tell him, stop telling us to be worried. Hmm. So I, I don't think that this is something that can't be resolved, but there's a lot of smoke here. And you yeah. keep telling me there's no fire. Where's the smoke coming from now? Yeah. What's, mm. what's, what's this thing that we see coming up if there's no fire here? Something's got to be cooking. So whether it means they're not going to go to the Super Bowl or they're going to have friction all season long, I don't know. And honestly, I don't really care. It's the off season. This, these things can get resolved overnight. But the whole campaign that we're making a bigger deal of it than we are, we're making the deal you told us yep. to make out Absolutely. of it. Absolutely. I, I agree with that wholeheartedly. Slick, like what's fascinating to me, and it, there's no more true phrase in sports than winning cures all. Because quite literally, if your team is winning, it does not matter what is going on. Winning will be the cure for it. So it's extremely fascinating that the Bills are winning, the second most winning organization in the regular season over the last three years, and there is still drama. Mm -hmm. If winning cares all, but winning hasn't even cared this, then y'all better believe that to some degree this drama is deep. Now, it's not just between quarterback Josh Allen and wide receiver Stephon Diggs. Remember, defensive coordinator and OG in the game, Leslie Frazier, he stepped down this year. 
A little word on the street was that Sean McDermott took over play calling two years ago when the Bills lost to the Chiefs in a historical fashion. Sean McDermott took over the play calling. Well, then now, Leslie Frazier was no longer going to be able to call plays going forward. Friction. Stephon Diggs, Josh Allen, 10-play drive, eight minutes left versus the Cincinnati Bengals at home. You're down 27 to 10. Throw your hands up in the air. Friction. Yeah. While it can be cured, I'm constantly reminded of one of my favorite quotes by my friend, a, a rapper. It wasn't all of a sudden, it was subtle. What ended up as a flood started out as a puddle. I think it is a puddle right now. Hmm. But y'all better believe every single flood started out with just a couple drops. We've seen the drops. Yeah, the drama's not over until Stefan Diggs tells us the drama is over. Josh Allen saying, I, I love my guy, doesn't tell me anything, because where did this start? It started with Stefan. Stefan's the one who has the issues here. So until I hear from him that all is good, no, the drama is still there. And to Joy's point, like, we didn't create this. Like, the media didn't create this. This is created by Stefan Diggs taking issue with Josh Allen on the sideline and then not showing up for the first day of OTAs. And then Sean McDermott being upset about him not showing up the first day of OTAs. So uh, the, the problem that I have, to your point, is not only the winning but Stephon Diggs wants to be more involved yeah, that was the, in the offense. See that, yeah. Like, the dude is targeted About. as much as anybody in the league, never mind with the Bills. I mean, I don't know. That's the part that I don't get is, like, how do you resolve that part of it in terms of he wants to be more – what it tells me is it's not just being more involved in the offense. There has to be something a little bit deeper than that. But bottom line is, that would suggest that this drama has not been resolved. The well, only, only thing about that is this, like, both players need to sit there and just realize that what were they before each of them got together, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. I thought Josh was a good quarterback. He wasn't this good mm -hmm. without Stephon Diggs, right? And then, and then Stephon Diggs. Good I mean, come on now, when you was with Minnesota Vikings, yeah. like, you were a good wide receiver, but you won this. Not at all. And I think sometimes we get so much in tune with our ego, right? I've been there. Man, they ain't blocking me. I don't need them. I don't, you know, even if it's my boy. Yeah. But it's like, hold up. I do need him. And he <laughs> needs me. And we are a team. And I think that how it could get resolved is going closer to camp. When you're in camp, it's just you, the team, the coaches, and that's it. And we practice against the defense. Offense against offense and defense. Did and I think that more of seeing that together, being together, throwing them touchdown passes, I think that's what it'll come to. Did he? Like, all right, let's just stop it. You know what I mean? Let's be Did either of you guys yeah. ever have an issue that carried into the offseason, though? That was like, nah. You you left and it wasn't resolved, and now you come back and it still is not resolved. That's I'm deep. Nah. Yeah, I've I've, I've never uh, left a season mad at my my boys, right? And then you come back and it's like, okay, we're still mad. I've never seen that before. Yeah. Joy, what do you read into it? Like, does it actually matter? Now, you've watched the game of football long enough to know that we see things like this and it means absolutely nothing, right? Sometimes receivers, particularly divas, they beef. Especially receivers, yeah, they are divas. Especially, especially yeah. receivers, <laughs> yes. they beef. It means nothing. Right but then right there too. other times we we've seen receivers beef with their quarterbacks and it could mean a little bit of everything. It could be the beginning of the end. Something or nothing, is this a big deal? Is this no deal? Should Bills fans to the NFL be mindful? Nothing is everything. Everything is something, which is another way of saying I don't know. But until it's resolved, it is something. Like, we are talking about it. We're talking about it because we were told to talk about it. And this isn't even really just what started with the sideline thing, because we see that all the time. And as media members, sometimes we make too much of sideline interactions. But the sideline interaction was just like, that was just like the first thing. Maybe that's something, maybe it's not whatever, they're losing, it doesn't matter. But when we got to camp and he wasn't there, and then Sean McDermott said what he said, and then there's all these other little stories coming out about the animosity that's there, well, now that does mean something. Mm. So it's just kind of building blocks towards a bigger story here. And like you said, winning fixes it all. If you go out and you have a great season and you're putting up big numbers, we're not going to talk about this anymore. But if you don't, then this is going to become a story that continues throughout the, the locker room. And Josh talking about how it's nothing and the media is making more of it and all of that, like... Sometimes that can work to shame the media into being quiet when there's really nothing there. But there clearly is something there because the head coach told the media that there was something there. Mm. So the, the only way that I would say that this is an actual problem is when they do get to camp or when they do get into the season and there are more problems or they're, they're, they are losing games that they should be winning, not squashing this now 
will, this will just be the base of more and more stories about the dysfunction or problems that are going on in Buffalo. So that to me is why it matters. Not because there's something that's really serious there, but if you start losing, this is just going to compound. Shady, there is one thing, though, if I'll be honest. Some, I don't know about offense. Never sat in an offensive meeting room. But in defensive meeting rooms, one of the core values, principles on defense in the NFL, one thing you can never do, don't ever sell your teammate out publicly. Ever. What do I mean by sell your teammate out? Dude gets beat. You can give up a touchdown. Don't ever, under any circumstance, That's sell your teammate out publicly. Yeah. It happens. Though. Now, when you get over to the side, it happens with some, it happens with immature people, yep. and it happens with uncalculated people. When you get over to the sideline on a bench, hey, bro, you know cover four, that was supposed to be you over the top. Like, I'm not supposed to carry him. Mm -hmm. Hey, you know you're supposed mm -hmm. to take that crosser. That's not me. I just cut him. I was giving you relief. He's not my man. Mm -hmm. But publicly, don't you ever sell your teammate out. Same on offense. Same, same thing. Stephon Diggs to Josh Allen in that playoff game, that was an exaggerated form of what we see oftentimes. Like, you shouldn't sell your teammate out. And y'all giving feel free to run the clip again. But when you go over to your quarterback, over to your quarterback, and you do that, yeah. like, that is rule number one. And Josh is not even acknowledging him. Correct, but Josh knows he's there. Like, you all, you better believe yeah. Josh knows that he is there, but, but Josh is just like, and I get that it happens, but it yeah. is fascinating. Kirk Cousins has missed Justin Jefferson a plethora of times. Sure. Let's not get it twisted. Sure. Jalen Hurts, I'm sure, missed A.J. Brown a time or two. Travis Kelsey has been open before. Remember Lamar Jackson and Mark Andrews? There's a meme oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. of, like, <laughs> right, there's right. a meme of it. But yeah. there's a difference between what we see with those guys and that. I mean, but... I, I guess from talking from the, the, the player perspective, is like sometimes it just happens, right? Mm -hmm. We are human and we do have like reactions. Oh, oh you missed the block. And, and, and you learn to not do that. And I am surprised because he, Stefan Diggs is older. You vet. And you learn that, you know, and then it's like, it's not like he's showing up a, a regular guy. You're showing the best player on the team. That part. Yeah, that so, part. so, but, but I do think that like, you can go to that video, right, and that scene, and you could, you could learn from that. Hey, I'm tripping my bad, bro. I just got, I just got in my head. I was mad. And I, I'm sure they know each other. So, so Josh probably knows that Stefan can get like that. But that, is, that doesn't, like, kill the relationship. Let me ask you this, but, The only thing I'm surprised about is that, like, how long it's lasts. Exactly. Is it a... Because to me, in life, everything is a respect thing. Like, there are certain things oh, I, you oh, just I, don't I, do I, No, I think they respect each other, though. No doubt about it. Yeah, yeah. But I do think, like, what you might have done to Chip Kelly, you wouldn't have done necessarily to Andy Reid. Oh, absolutely. What you might have done to Chip <laughs> Kelly, you might not have done to Deuce Staley. Absolutely. Like, there's just certain, like, even if you a disrespectful person, an emotional person, a human which being. Which I'm not. Which you're not. Okay. But there's yeah. certain levels of respect and relationship. If my mom and dad ever calls me, you know what I'm never saying? What? Yeah, I'll never do that. Yeah. It don't matter how mad I am. Who you just you know, that? like... That's a good point. People I, do that, though. They say what to their parents. I don't. I don't. Yeah. <laughs> because there's what like... to their parents? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so, though there is respect, do you read anything into the fact of like, that's Josh Allen you I was just talking to? Man around ball for so long, I, I can't see these guys going to the season still beefing. Right? Because, like, I need you, you need me. Yep. And they can't win without each other, though. I'm not even talking about the players, I'm talking about the team. And knowing that, I, I just feel like the, the veterans in that room, the Von Millers, the guys like that, I'm sure they're going to have a talk. You know, Sean McDermott has this, the committee of all the leaders. And every morning, they come and they meet together. And I'm sure that's going to be a topic. Like, yo, what's up, man? What's going on? What we doing? Yeah. We, we on a team. We together. And all it takes is a conversation. And then once I start saying my issues with you and you say your issues with me, and then after that, it's on the table, then they move forward. Because Josh Allen, he's a true leader, right? Mm -hmm. and, he's, and he's super mature. And I think Stephon Diggs, what I hear about him, and what I know about it, I think he's a m mature yeah. player. It's just that he had a moment. He just have to get over it. I think it's time. Let's get past this. Because the Jets got a lot better. Yep. The Dolphins got a lot better. Yep. The Patriots, well, Tom Brady's out there, so you know what they're going to be like. But we got to move past the win this division. You didn't have and to if take not, that shot. You didn't have to <laughs> take that shot. You know, Shady going to get a fish oh, in the barrel, man. I'm going to shoot it. <laughs> Subscribe here to get the latest from Speak. And go watch a few segments from our other shows on FS1.